And now broadcasting from the EFX Sports Studio, it's ESPN EFX Sports Radio with Dr. Jeff Galini. Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Golini, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Brian Andrews, and welcome to another episode of EFX Sports Radio. How's it going, Brian? I am doing fantastic as usual. I'm ready to get it on. I feel like like white on. I'm like white on rice, like a fat man on a biscuit. Let's roll. Oh man, that that that's uh that's pretty good. So uh, we had a good week last week out here in Montana. You're now back in uh, your studio in Bakersfield. In good old Bakersfield, very hot. Yeah, we're we're actually cold. It was 48 degrees this morning when I was out uh, doing the old uh, zone stop. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I know I was freezing, but was any- last week we were sweating. <laughs> I know, but anyhow, um, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about uh, creatine. Uh, you know, one of the things that I hear from a lot of uh, adults and uh, kids and their parents is creatine is dangerous. It's no good for you. Um, so I want to talk about kind of what what the bad rap is. Uh, you know, I mean, what are some things that you've heard that uh, people have reported? You know, it's honestly, it's all over the map. And what's, to me, what's most interesting about creatine, especially as a supplement, it's probably the most misunderstood one. And actually, it's one of the most effective supplements I think someone could use. If I had to just literally pick one supplement outside of a good vitamin mineral type thing, creatine is absolutely positively number one on my list. Now, to answer your question, I mean, you, you hear everything from it's a steroid, which I don't know where that one came from, but I guess that's media hype. I do recall there was this big case some years ago. I think it was a, a high school wrestler or something like that who ended up passing away. And I think they tried to blame it on his use of creatine. It, but what they failed to also mention was that he was completely dehydrated, trying to make weight for his, you know, his uh, class that he was going to be wrestling in. And honestly the lord only knows whatever what else this kid could have been taking so i I think that's probably the most uh researched one that i've seen if you if you do some google searches that type of thing but people talk about getting cramps um my goodness you what what, how about you what have you heard i mean of course we hear that one we hear about you know intestinal tract discomfort things like that i mean you know i have seen a couple cases where you know uh players have fainted you know and they said, oh, he was using creatine. But it's always interesting that, you know, being out in the sun for two and a half hours with no water didn't contribute to that. It had to be the creatine. So most of it, you know, on the severe side has all been media hype. Um, there has been nothing proven. Creatine is the most, and we're talking about creatine monohydrate, is the most researched single component, I believe, of all time, uh, you yes. know, not only for oh, there, there, safety. There are over 200 documented studies that are in the PubMed. Yeah, and, you know, including uh, safety and toxicity studies, and it's been out in the marketplace long enough now, you know, since 1992, since we uh, first really introduced it, so it's not like it's just been out there for a few weeks, uh, and I still haven't seen any, you know, major um, bad side effects. As a matter of fact, you know, the pharmaceutical industry is constantly uh, coming up with new uses, uh, you know, for for medical use. So it's pretty interesting. But I think most of the side effects that you really hear about and and we know about, you know, we know where it comes from. Things like, you know, water retention, bloating, cramping, uh, diarrhea, stomach discomfort, you know, any type of gastrointestinal uh, issues comes from creatinine, right? Oh, absolutely. And that's, again, maybe we should, uh, you know, we're always going to have new listeners and people who go, okay, I've heard of this, this creatine stuff, but maybe we should just say real quickly what it is sure, and what it, what it does. Well, absolutely. So we're talking about creatine monohydrate. We're going to talk a little bit later about, you know, what other types of creatine and why uh, Dr. Jeff and Brian don't consider those creatines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't I was, try, I was trying to be polite, you know. Um, <laughs> again, you know, creatine monohydrate, that's the gold, man. You know, that that's the one that has all the research. But the problem is that creatine has a flaw. It's been known since its creation uh, back in the 1800s that it's not stable in solution. What happens, uh, similar to uh, the old uh, experiments we all did uh, in grade school where you take baking soda, you add vinegar, 
and you cause this chemical reaction, you no longer have vinegar and baking soda. Um, you have a new compound. Well, that's what happens to creatine is it starts to convert to creatinine, which is a bile waste. It's toxic. It's no good for you. It's poison. Um, and that is what happens to creatine. And that's what causes all those side effects. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think especially an athlete who's looking for greater performance and wants to do it drug free. This goes back to why I said I would choose creatine over anything else because it's it's not magic, but you know what? It, you are gonna if you are gonna notice a distinct difference in your performance. And just to clarify for again the, the uninitiated that don't really understand this, your body naturally produces creatine, or it will extract it from red meats when you eat them, certain things like that. But what's happening is in the muscle cell when you're doing say a barbell curl, that's what's being utilized almost like the fuel inside of a cell. So naturally, if you have more there you're gonna do more reps. So I can remember distinctly years ago when I first used this stuff, you know, I'd had a weight, I'd fail at say, you know, eight reps. I remember knocking out nine, 10, 11, 12 and failing and just being almost amazed that I could do that and improve so quickly. So uh, even if you get a 5% boost, let's say, hey, in the world of athletics at the highest levels, I mean, we know a lot of races are won by one one thousandth of a second. I want that advantage. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, just to kind of uh, follow up uh, on a couple more things, uh, points that you made, you know, creatine is so important that it's one of the few things that your body actually manufactures. If you do not have creatine, you cease to exist. Your body cannot live. So that's why it actually manufactures it. Um, as Brian said, you also can get it from red meats, you know, uh, are very high in creatine. The problem is, you know, if you cook your meats too fast, you overcook, you start that conversion from creatine to creatinine. Um, hence, the dietary supplement. You know, as Brian said, I mean, uh, athletics are so competitive that any advantage that we can get um, that's legal, um, we need to take. You know, and creatine is one of those things that is safe um, and it does work. You know, it is what your body uses for your main fuel source. You know, in the first 10 or 15 seconds, you're using glycogen. Then the whole creatine, you know, kicks in to uh, convert to ATP, that whole cycle. So it's crucial to an athlete to keep their creatine stores up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you you talked about the creatinine side of it. Again, for to give people a mental picture, it's like putting fuel in your car, the exhaust coming out, that's the creatinine. And I explain it this way to a lot of people and the light bulb goes off. A lot of times, you know, you have a yearly checkup or whenever you go to the doctor, they're gonna do a urinalysis on you. You know, have you pee in a cup, let's just say it that way. What they're gonna do is test that urine to see what your creatinine levels are. And there's a certain range. If they are outside of that range, it's going to cause some issues where they're going to want to have you come back in for further testing on your kidneys to, to try to figure out why you have such high creatinine levels. And I know going back to what we said, where does this bad hype come from? A lot of those older creatine products people were taking sometimes were artificially inflating those levels. And then their medical doctor was like, oh, no, 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 you can't use that stuff. It's destroying your kidneys and that type <laughs> of thing, not knowing that this was a, one of the healthiest people uh, probably in his clinic in front of him that day who was just almost taken too much of, of this product and that was the byproduct that showed up in his test. And and actually, you know, uh, that is the, the normal process when your body spends creatine. Like you said, that is the exhaust. That's the waste. I mean, that's a normal process. But we're talking about ingesting that. And I think the problem, like you said, where a lot of these uh, folks would go in using some creatine type, usually not creatine monohydrate uh, unless they took a lot. But really, when you get into all these other... Um, ridiculous forms that have come out in the market and we've seen so many types creatine hcl creatine alpha ketoglutarate creatine nitrate i'm sorry you got to take creatine monohydrate you then are going to subject it to an acid in a liquid solution uh conversion to creatinine and then you're going to end up with only 60 percent 50 percent 40 percent creatine what's the you why <laughs> so that it goes uh, in the solution better? Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't right, make it well, work any better. Right. Well, and again, we always come back to stability and performance. And I guess if you're a marketer, you've got to start trying to differentiate yourself from the rest of the packs so of people look at your thing and then you 
hype on, you know, that particular component that, like you said, it goes into a solution better or who, who knows? Ours is white and theirs is green. I, I don't know, but it, it, almost, it does sound absurd, you know, and actually let's go ahead and take a quick break right now. When we come back, let's pick up on that topic and let's talk about how you fix that flaw that you were alluding to earlier. Sounds good. How to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N.com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. Hey everybody, I'm Billy Gordon. I'm one of the coaches for the Heights Wrestling Club. I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about EFX Sports and what their products have done for me and my wrestlers and the athletes that I lead. Six months ago, I got introduced to EFX Sports and I immediately started using them myself. The results have been nothing short of amazing. My body fat and weight have come down drastically. My strength has increased. If you get the opportunity, I highly recommend you give it a a shot. This is Dr. Jeff Galini of All American Pharmaceutical. I'm sure you've been seeing our national brand EFX Sports featuring Carbolin and Crealcolin all around the state lately. Our supplements are formulated for pros to high schoolers to just the average gym goer and are all about improving your game. You can find EFX Sports and Billings at Yellowstone Fitness, Lucky's, Bonanza's Health Food, Granite Fitness, and GNC, just to mention a few. Well, welcome back to EFX Sports Radio with Dr. Jeff Bellini and my co-host Brian Andrews. We've been talking about uh, creatine, you know, uh, why an athlete needs it. And, you know, one thing I was thinking about, Brian, over that commercial break, um, boy, those were good commercials, is uh, is this safe for kids to use? What's your opinion on that? I know mine. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I have, well, my son's now, well, one is almost 15 and the other one is about to turn 13. And I remember we, when we had a liquid form of this that we had, it was sweet in a certain way when they were like, I don't know, maybe eight years old, they used to beg me for it because they uh-huh. love the taste of it. So again, if it's something that's naturally occurring, let's, let's say it this way, I don't personally see a harm in a kid taking it any more than say a vitamin and mineral. But again, let's let's you know let's let's tote the safe on here. Always consult with your physician before using or taking any advice. And <laughs> I'm and not a doctor. I just play one on this uh, radio show. Yeah, and I'll be so bold to say that you know don't give those kids uh, caffeinated drinks. Uh, this is what you want to do naturally, fueling their body. Um, but we were talking about you know creatinine and kind of the bad hype about creatine. Um, but good news, somebody fixed that problem. You and know, who might that be, Jeff? Hey, you know, I hate to uh, blow my own horn, but... Uh, <laughs> I say blow away. All right. Well, yeah, that was uh, that was me and uh, All-American Pharmaceutical. You know, as we said, there, there's always been this flaw. Well, I was able to discover how to fix this flaw. And quite simply, um, the lower the pH, meaning, you know, creatines that are uh, mixed with citric acid, um, we were told to, to drink them with fruit drinks, Uh, those are converted a lot quicker. By elevating the pH and actually buffering that creatine monohydrate, um, you completely stabilize it. So crealcaline is the only world stable creatine, point blank, backed by a patent. When you say stable, by the way, how do you define stable? Stable means we are talking about not wanting to ingest creatinine. So stable means that when you put crealcaline into a solution or it hits the stomach, um, it is completely stable where creatine monohydrate or all these other wacky forms of creatine that I see these guys using at the gym um, aren't stable. Once they hit solution, instantaneously they start to convert to creatinine. And again, you know, why would you want to 
put your lips on the exhaust pipe and, you know, take in <laughs> some exhaust. I, I mean, I remember people telling us, oh, creatinine is safe. It's not dangerous. Uh, one guy even said, I'm going to come out with a product. Well, creatinine causes fatigue, um, dizziness, um, just not being alert. Uh, it's wacky stuff. So you surely don't want to be ingesting it. And sure, it might not kill you. Uh, but who knows over time? And again, why why take a, a chance, especially as an athlete? You don't want anything that's going to be counterproductive to your performance. Right. Like I said, it all comes down to that edge. And I want the greatest possible edge I can possibly get. If I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm a sprinter, pole vaulter, football, wh whatever it is, I, I, I want the absolute top end edge, the greatest margin. And, you know, crealkaline is one of the only forms of creatine that it's a standalone you know we don't need to mix it with caffeine or anything else it's always kind of funny when um, people I speak to start talking about creatine and I say well you know what creatine product are you using and they'll mention XYZ brand that contains 35 ingredients and I'm like that's not a creatine product that's a pre-workout yeah but it has creatine in it yeah but that's not a creatine product you are not getting the effects of creatine when you're taking it with caffeine and, you know, taurine and beta aline, that's a pre-workout. So I always kind of get a laugh. And then, of course, the companies that got to mix all their creatines. What's well, up with that, Brian? That oh, if, that's, you're, that's, if your creatine is so good, you got to mix it with five others? Well, what are the five others, number one? But th this is just a huge pet peeve of mine. And I'm pretty sure I think I have an idea of where this whole concept came from. Again, and let's talk about marketing and differentiation. Again, you want to have these new or different types, whatever, so people get all excited. And then it kind of comes down to, hey, if I were to have five different kinds all mixed into this one formula together, I'm going to get the best of all worlds. That's like saying, let's mix five different brands of water together into another bottle. But that's still water at the end of the day. <laughs> you're not going to get any more benefit. And honestly, I think this whole idea came from the concept, you know, in the bodybuilding world of stacking drugs. Well. I'm sorry to burst anyone's bubble. Creatine is not a drug. You're not going to get a hormonal response the way you would from taking, an, you know, Anavar or anything like that. So, you know, if you're listening and you're using uh, creatine, yes, I'm very partial to crealcalin. And here's why. Because if there's anything better, we'd be making it. Absolutely. We have a state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facility. Uh, somebody said the other day, well, um, what's the difference between your brand and the others? And I said nothing ours is just the best and they say well why do you say that you know why do you think uh yours is better i, I say because we can uh Crealkin right now is the best you know is somebody going to come up with something better in the future maybe but they haven't yet <laughs> you know uh, yeah. when they can get a patent and show that you know they have some better way of absorbing it but they first got to stabilize it so they first have to use my technology to get that creatine stable before they can even come up with uh any other way for absorption or some delivery system. Um, so again, you know, uh, very partial to that because it does work. Um, the other thing I like about it is uh, because of the low delivery, it's in capsules. So you don't need to uh, mix another powder. If you like powder, it's in powders, but the good old purple caps, um, number one selling uh, creatine through Europa in the United States. It's been that way for the last three years, Brian? Yeah, at least. Yeah, maybe if not four. Um, so, again, you know, you, you need to try it. Um, but, again, if you're using a creatine product that's not creatine monohydrate, throw it out. I yes. Mean, if uh, I'm not, glad you said that. Yeah, go throw it in the garbage because uh, it's not good for you. Um, and you may be thinking, yeah, but it works. Well, how do you know it works when it's got all this other stuff in it? If, <laughs> if you aren't feeling... You know, recuperation, recovery, more endurance and stamina, you know, and muscle gain from that creatine. Uh, caffeine does not do that. Remember, caffeine restricts. Creatine does the opposite. So get rid of it. it I'd rather have you using creatine monohydrate. Um, you know, if you're the kind of guy that likes watching VHSs or using his cell phone from two years ago, God bless you, man. I mean, it still works. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, if you, if you haven't gotten the point by now, let it be this folks if you're gonna go and use a creatine product first and foremost make sure it is creatine monohydrate it should say it right on the side of the bottle if you're gonna if you're gonna get that and then if you want to take it one step you know above you want to go to that next level 
get creoglin. It is buffered creatine monohydrate protected by what three three patents now and i think you still have about 30 more pending around the world correct uh something like that you, you, you lose count after a while yeah <laughs> <laughs> well um you know i we've always said and we'll, well let's just do it again let's put our money where our mouth is how how could we get some samples out to these listeners if they want to just take it for a test drive forget everything we've said for the past few minutes here try and see for yourself what, what do you think we could do well, first of all, you know, if you have a question, you know, maybe you're not um, as schooled on supplements and you're using a product and, you know, you don't quite understand, you know, what we are trying to, to put across, uh, send me an email. Go to uh, allamericanpharmaceutical.com, scroll down, look for Ask the Scientist and say, hey, I'm using uh, XYZ brand. Um, is this safe? Is it good? You know, can I give it to my kid? Um, I'll be the first to say if it's creatine monohydrate, yeah, you know, it is good. But as Brian said, you know, get on to the new technology. But anyhow, if you want to try uh, Crealkalin, we would rather give it away so that you could see how well it works before you even invest in it. So how about that? Um, yeah, put your money where your mouth is, right? Yep. So again, you can go to the All-American Pharmaceutical website and you can uh, email me at Ask the Scientist. And just say, hey, I heard this on uh, your sports show. Want to try some Crealkalin? Make sure you give me your address. Um, if you're out of state, if you're out of the country, uh, I'll send you some. If you're in the Billings area, which is my hometown, um, you can pick it up at any of our store locations. Uh, GNC, Bonanza, Mary's Health, uh, Lucky's, uh, Yellowstone Fitness, Granite Fitness, just to mention a few if not, look for the EFX mobile around or one of our demos. Um, and if you still can't find it, I'm going to give you a phone number, 406-245-5793. And anyone could use that number. Uh, again, just mention the EFX Sports Show, and you want to try some Crealkalin, and we will make sure that you get some to try. Right. So in closing here, again, it's use creatine monohydrate, and if you want a better, uh, the upgraded form of it, Crealkalin. And stay away from all these crazy mixed creatine products that have, like you said, four, five, six forms supposedly of creatine in them. You're just wasting your time and money, folks. And money is uh, hard to come by these days. <laughs> no kidding. So we want to thank you. Uh, and uh, Brian, we'll, uh, we'll close her here, huh? That sounds fantastic. Let's roll. All right. Bye-bye. Out. Thanks for listening to ESPN EFX Sports Radio. Be sure to check out EFX Sports online at aaefx.com. And don't forget to check out EFX Sports Supplements everywhere fitness products are sold.